Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera. Apa khabar? For today's class, we're going to focus on pricing. As usual, before that, I would like to revisit the previous chapter that we have learned before, which was new product development. The main points of this chapter include, first, where to find and develop new product. Second, eight stages in new product development. Third, four stages of product life cycle and its marketing strategies. Fourth, which I did not discuss uh, further in the video, is additional considerations of product. The end. So I would like to start with a question. What is the price of this lemak? Jawab dalam hati. The price of lemak can be influenced by several factors. The price of other products in the market also can be influenced by several factors, which will be discussed further in this chapter and this video. Uh, let us move to the next slide. Learning objectives. I would like to remind you that for this week, I combined two chapters into one. So there are several main points that you need to understand. First, the definition of pricing. Second, the factors influencing pricing. Third, the main pricing strategies of product. Fourth, the main pricing strategies of new product. Fifth, the pricing strategies to maximize profits and sales. Six, the pricing strategies according to different types of customers and situations. Seven and eight are relating to issues in pricing uh, strategies. My main concerns are the first main point until the sixth main point. So let us move to the first main point of this chapter. You can read the definition of price here, but I would like to simplify. Price is the amount of money that you need to pay in order for you to get a product. The price of this lemang is 30 ringgit, so you have to pay 30 ringgit in order to eat it. Kalau tak, awal boleh bawa je. So, for the second main point of this chapter is factors influencing pricing. Saya restructure balik. Saya letak pertama uh, definition, kedua uh, practice, ketiga strategies because I think uh, it's easier for you to understand if I restructure it. So, let us move to the second uh, main point of this chapter. Internal and external factors affecting pricing. So you have to remember that the price of the product can be influenced by external and internal factors. So the first one is target costing. The company will determine the cost of the product because apa dia akan buat yang pertama, they will ask a question. Uh, do you think that this product can be sell, uh, can be sold into the market? If the answer is yes, the next step that they need to do is to determine the cost. Okay, so when they determine the cost, that will affect the price of the product. That is target costing. Okay, so the the company will have uh, will have to ask a question whether the product can be sold into the market or not. And if they say yes, they will move into uh, the process of determining the cost. After they have uh, moved to the process of determining the cost, they will design the product. Okay, so macam backward punya process. Kita tanya dulu boleh jual ke tak, kita determine the cost dan kita buat product. Dan uh, kenapa kita perlu tanya uh, market sama ada product ini boleh dijual ataupun tidak because that is where consumer value consideration. Because the consumer, they have 
perception towards the value of the product. Uh, sama ada produk ini worthwhile untuk dibeli ataupun tidak. So, kalau dia kata boleh, okay, bagus. So, we can proceed to determine the cost and we can proceed to designing the product. Seterusnya, so, you also have to do about uh, organization consideration. Because you need to know who actually set the price. Set the prices of the products in the market. So, this include top management. And normally, the lower management will propose to top management uh, of, the product, uh, of the price of the product. So, if the top management agreed, so the price of the product will be set up according to the decision being made by the top management. However, the decision is advised by the lower management. The lower management to siapa? Mestilah salespeople. Because they are really close to the products in the organization. So, for uh, who can influence prices? So, siapa yang boleh influence price? Lalu ialah sales managers, production managers, finance managers, as well as accountants. Because they know about the market, they know about the demand. So, that's why they are those who are able to influence the price and they are actually among the lower management who will influence the top management decision on the pricing of the product. Seterusnya, market and demand. Okay, uh, so when we talk about market and demand, saya nak tingkat lapan, ya. I just would like to tell you that uh, this is actually external consideration. So you have to remember that uh, the price of the product is depending on the demand of the consumer and the market outside the organization. So that's why you have to understand there are different types of markets uh, for pure competition. What we think of pure competition? Eh? Di mana there are many buyers and sellers available. Ada banyak orang membeli, ada banyak orang menjual. Jadi, dia pure competition, memang semua orang boleh compete antara satu sama lain. Sebab ada banyak, eh, bukan banyak, ada ramainya customer, ada ramai juga uh, sellers. Uh, who trade in uniform community seperti uh, wheat, gandum, okay? and any other goods sell in the market. Jadi, uh, normally they do not spend too much on marketing. Okay, that one is pure competition. There are many buyers and sellers uh, dalam sesuatu, uh, dalam menjual community product, community products. For monopolistic competition, if you see, uh, saya takut saya ni. For monopolistic competition, uh, there are many buyers and sellers who trade over a range of prices. Sama juga, kalau pure competition tadi ada ramai buyers and ramai sellers uh, yang berjual barang community. Okay, uh, kalau kalau untuk monopolistic competition, uh, ada banyak juga, ada ramai juga buyers and sellers. But uh, they have over a uh, different range of price that they offer to the customer. So, bila kita nampak ada different range of prices offered to the customer, itu bermakna we have different types or different group or different segment of target market. Yelah, kalau untuk harga yang murah, untuk target market yang macam ni, sederhana macam ni, untuk yang uh, high price, ada target market dia juga. Okay. So, uh, for monopolistic competition, there are many buyers and sellers who provide different range of prices. So, bila ada banyak, bila ada different range, range of prices, it means that they are some, uh, they are uh, they are marketing uh, offering or kita panggil marketing activities offered by the sellers. Sebab kalau dalam pure competition tadi, dia kurangnya, dia tidak banyak uh, marketing effort atau marketing activities exercise by the sellers. 
Kenapa terjadi macam tu Sebab bila dia jual barang community Memang dah Dia dah set satu price Dia tak boleh tinggi daripada tu Kalau awak jual gula ke Awak jual uh, beras ke Dia memang uh, Kerajaan telah setkan satu price Yang kita tak boleh melebihi Pada harga yang sepatutnya Okay So Tapi kalau dalam Monopolistic uh, competition They are many uh, They have They have to work on marketing Activities or marketing strategies Uh, in order to attract people to buy because they are offering different range of prices kan sebab kita tahu tadi different range of prices bermaksud ada different group of target market so bila ada different group of target market setiap orang akan berbeza dia punya needs and wants dia bila berbeza marketing pun akan berbeza tak sama for oligopolistic competition oligopolistic competition bermaksud consists of few large sellers consists of few large sellers. Contoh dia ialah dekat Malaysia ni ada berapa banyak wireless service provider. Kita ada Salcom, kita ada Maxis. Uh, uh, saya ulang sekali lagi wireless service provider. Awak sendiri pun tahu tak tak banyak pun dekat Malaysia ni. Okay. So they are few large sellers. So, if you have the capacity to uh, provide wireless seller, uh, sorry, wireless service provider, so you can become one of these few large seller in Malaysia. Uh, untuk pure monopoly, uh, this one, siapa yang provide electric kepada uh, household di Malaysia? Bukan household saja, to all the uh, to all the users who needs electricity. Ada satu je kan, TNB saja. So, uh, pure monopoly is dominated by one seller. So, normally, okay, most of the people or most of the sellers, they would like to go for pure competition and monopolistic competition because they have more opportunities there. Uh, there are many sellers in pure competition, in monopolistic competition, tapi kalau dalam only monopolistic competition dengan pure monopoly, Uh, only big company are able to survive so that's why kalau oligopolistik tu dekat Malaysia ada berapa je se- uh, service provider untuk wireless uh, internet connection tak ramai tak banyak okay pure monopoly lagi lah ada satu je that's why kalau tarif elektrik naik kita terpaksa juga uh, follow because that is the only uh, electricity provider in Malaysia kalau awak nak boycott awak seorang je lah lepas tu rumah awak je yang tak ada elektrik Okay, so yang seterusnya, uh, we are st- still talking about external factors. We are still talking about market, we are talking, talking about demand. Okay, tadi tu pasal market, now we are talking about demand. So when we are talking about demand, ada produk, dia, uh, dia highly sensitive produk. Highly price sensitive produk. Harga dia naik je sikit, demand dia akan turun. Okay. Uh, itu saya terangkan dulu. Nak bagi tahu je, price ila- elasticity of demand. So, kalau awak nampak ni eh, uh, saya ada uh, saya dah terangkan tadi. There are certain products, when the price is higher, the demand is lower. So, if uh, if your product is high price elas- elasticity of demand, bermaksud, Naik je sikit je harga, eh, naik je 10 sen, demand akan jatuh. So, this one, you have to be careful with your price. Uh, itulah sebabnya, sebab bila kita cakap pasal market, that's when you know uh, in which market you are situated in, then you know how to uh, set up your price. Kalau awak dalam pure monopoly, awak letak harga berapa pun relax je, no problem. Tapi of course lah dia are certain uh, kita akan terima tentangan daripada beberapa pihak. Okay. However to tell you that you have to do uh, you are from which market. Then you know how to decide your product. And then second when it when it uh, comes to demand uh, you need to know whether your product is high uh, sensitivity of price or low sensitivity of price. Kalau high sensitivity of, uh, sensitivity of price, so awak kena really be careful with the pricing strategies in the organisation. Okay, so if you see here, saya, saya rasa dah, dah, saya dah terangkan tadi dah, 
price saya letak buku saya kat atas je eh. susah nak baca ok uh, price elastic, elasticity sensitivity of demand changes in price kalau in elastic demand uh, in elastic tidak elastic lepas so your product Uh, tidak uh, hardly changes with a small change in price. So if there is a slight, uh, if, there, if there is small changes or small change in price, you don't have to face a big problem. But if you are, uh, if you have product with elastic demand, so the demand changes greatly with small change in price. So kalau naik sepuluh sen drop dia punya demand tu drop banyak tapi kalau in elastic kalau uh, naik mungkin naik 10 sen ada uh, demand ni still macam tak 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 turun banyak pun ataupun dia nak turun pun susah lah so there's no problem with you to uh, increase the price of the product ok saya gerakkan lagi so these are the other external economic Eh, sorry, external factors that influence the price of the product in the organization, economic condition, like recession, uh, interest rates. Kalau interest rate naik, so definitely the price also akan naik. Economic conditions are, eh, sorry, economic condition is one of the uh, most powerful, uh, most powerful external factors that will influence the price of the product. Kita cakap it's like economic, one of the things which is happening all over the world now is the COVID-19 crisis which affect the economy uh, of many countries, all of the countries in the world. Okay, so that's why you can see that the price of the product, some of them are having changes in the price of the product. Reseller respond to price. So, bila saya cakap pasal reseller, Okay, uh, you reseller ni ialah adalah orang yang dia beli lepas tu dia jual balik eh. So, bila kita nak beli barang, uh, I mean the the manufacturer, they sell the product to the seller and then they resell, they resell back to the customer. So, their respond also will affect the price of the product sebab mereka yang akan set satu harga baru kepada customer. So, it's up to them how they want to set the price okay so it's very important for you to give support to them so that they are able to maintain the price as low as possible so the government and of course the government uh, is also one of the important external factors which influence the price of the product because as i told you earlier they set the uh, price uh, i mean they set the ceiling price. Ceiling tu atas kan ceiling. Maksud ceiling ni ialah dia tak boleh go naik. Boleh ke awak sampai ceiling? Awak sampai situ je kan? Ceiling, ceiling, ceiling rumah ni. Ceiling rumah sampai situ. Dia tak boleh naik lagi daripada atas daripada ceiling tu. Jadi harga paling tinggi pun sampai ceiling sajalah. Uh, itulah hari tu pasal mask. When they want to sell mask, I mean the seller, they want to sell mask, So the government are giving them the ceiling price. Uh, how much are the maximum price that they can sell? Sebab kalau lebih daripada itu, they can be uh, they they can be punished for that. Okay. Uh, sebab itu, uh, the government should take control for the community products, for the product which are important, especially during the COVID 19 crisis, which is masks. Kita perlukan mask untuk untuk kita apa? Untuk kita pakai, okay, to protect us. Social concerns, okay. When it comes to social concern, contoh short term sales. Uh, this is all uh, relating to the market actually, okay. So uh, the the company decide on the short term sales, market share, profit goes. Sebab the company need to know uh, how much Uh, of the market share that they want to pursue. Jadi, bila dia dah tahu market share dia berapa yang dia nak pursue, so dia boleh set lah berapa price yang dia nak letak. Sebab, uh, some of the company, what they will do, okay, they will have to look into the market first, 
how much the market share that they want to gain. Market share saya pernah bagi tahu sebelum ni kan, market share tu apa, tolong recall balik supaya awak lebih faham. Okay, the profit goal, how much they want to get, uh, how uh, how much of the profit that they want to obtain or acquire. So when they know all this, this will help them to set up the price in the market. So seterusnya, saya rasa itu saja untuk second main point. So, we'll go to the third main point, which is the main uh, strategies for product. Ada tiga, saya nak bagi awak, sebab kalau awak tengok macam ni, dia jadi macam terlampau banyak. Okay, there are three. Uh, there are three uh, main point. There are three main point. There are three major pricing strategies for product. First is customer Value based pricing, ha, ni customer value based pricing. Nampak sini ya? Eh? Customer value based pricing. Second, cost based pricing. Mana cost? Cost based pricing. Third, competition based pricing. Secara mudahnya, saya nak bagi awak faham. When you want to decide on the price of the product. Awak akan tengok ialah pertama ialah customer value based pricing. How the customer value your product? That's how you decide on the price of the product. Because the customer saya nak bagi tahu dengan awak dia ada dia punya perception dia sendiri berapa patut harga saya dah pernah bagi tahu dalam kelas ataupun dalam video ke okay uh, they already have the perception of value that they have, that they store in their mind. Berapa harga lemang ni kalau awak tengok tak akan 10 sen kan? Takkanlah seratus ringgit. Takkan lebih daripada itu. So, one of the way to uh, set your price is based on the customer value, uh, customer value based pricing. Second, this is very normal. Most of the company use this kind of strategy, cost based uh, cost based pricing, because when you want to produce a product, there's a cost that you need to bear, and when it comes to cost. Uh, kita ada variable cost, kita ada fixed cost. Kita akan belajar sekejap lagi ya. Eh. Okay. Uh, so, this cost, you have, uh, untuk awak dapat profit, awak kena cover dulu cost tu, baru awak boleh dapat profit. So, awak kena kira dulu cost, dan awak kena tahu profit yang berapa yang awak nak dapat. Yang ketiga ialah competition based pricing. You refer to your competitor's strategies, cost prices and market offering, then you set up your price. Because you do not, uh, because you want to beat your competitors, So, you want to have a better pricing as compared to that. So, kalau kita tengok pertama balik, dalam value based pricing, dalam value based pricing, kita ada uh, beberapa, uh, there are several strategies inside value, uh, customer value based pricing. Saya ulang sekali lagi, there are several strategies inside, inside ni. Eh. Ah, jadi value based pricing sebenarnya customer value based pricing ok jadi price uh, pricing yang pertama pricing strategi yang pertama ialah good value pricing so if you want to give good value pricing itu bermaksud you are giving them the combination of quality and good service at fair price affordable price uh, so you know that uh, if you want to offer the price it is the combination of a good price It's the combination of good quality and good service at a fair price. Everyday low pricing. So, there are several uh, companies who use everyday low pricing. Contoh Tesco. Okay, uh, Giant. So, nak cakap dia everyday low pricing ni, uh, in order for you to tell to the public that you have everyday low pricing, kita kena ada satu policy. Polisi itu kita kena perbarui dan we have to uh, communicate the policy to the uh, customer to tell you that you are the organization who provide everyday low pricing. Bukan senang-senang nak kata everyday low pricing. Sebab everyday low pricing itu bermaksud they are giving low price dia below sikit daripada uh, apa? Below daripada market price kepada customer. Cuma you have to understand when everyday low pricing Promotion tidak selalu because they provide everyday low price. So, they do not give frequent sales promotion or discount. 
Kalau high low pricing, normally ini adalah uh, fashion punya kedai, okay. So, uh, normally they will charge higher on everyday basis. Uh, harga tu agak mahal sedikit tapi they will always give you sales promotion or discount on selected items. Okay. So, itu perbezaan dia. Dia tak sama everyday low pricing dengan high low pricing. High low pricing, they charge you a higher price tapi they uh, frequently give you discount. Contohnya pada hari raya, uh, pada waktu Ramadan ataupun kalau dekat uh, overseas, uh, kalau macam uh, apa winter sales, autumn sales, so they, they, they give a lot of promotion to the customer. Value added pricing bermaksud attach value added features and service to differentiate the company offers. So, uh, there are many companies, they are charging you with high price, higher price as compared to the other uh, brand in the market because they are giving you extra service. Okay, so bila dia bagi awak extra service, Sebab itulah dia punya harga tu lebih mahal. Okay. Macam awak pergi dekat butik, kenapa harga di butik lebih mahal daripada harga di luar? Sebab because dia boleh alter awak punya, dia boleh ikut awak punya baju, uh, apa dia boleh, uh, awak boleh pilih designer mana yang awak nak. Okay, so these are the, the, the services yang kita tak boleh dapat kat luar lah. Okay, uh, to tell you that there are different services. Kalau butik tu satu hari dia mahal sikit. Okay, sebab dia ada service lain yang mungkin dia akan bagi kepada customer. And there are, there are many other uh, apa, uh, sellers who are giving you higher price with additional services. Okay, ni dah sampai cost based pricing tadi saya dah pernah bagi tahu. I think uh, it's easy for you to understand. Cuma yang saya rasa awak kena faham fixed cost ialah sesuatu yang tiap-tiap bulan memang kena bayar. Okay, uh, so dan dia juga tidak, uh, dia paling penting, tidak mempengaruhi level of production. Kalau awak bayar pun gaji dia seribu ke tiga belas ribu ke sekali pun dia tidak affect kepada production level awak. Kalau awak kena awak bayar rent tu sampai sepuluh ribu ke sebelah ribu ke dia tidak affect kepada production level. Production level berapa banyak yang awak hasilkan. Okay. Uh, so fixed cost adalah rent, heat, interest, executive salaries. Saya dah, saya dah mention before. Variable cost. Okay. Variable cost adalah cost yang akan... Uh, akan ber, berubah um, mengikut level of production. So, maksudnya kalau production tu tinggi, dia punya cost dia akan berubah juga. Kalau production dia rendah, cost dia akan berubah juga. Okay. So, it is actually raw materials and packaging. Okay, di sini saya nak terangkan. Eh. Bila saya kata variable cost, ada tak dekat sini? Okay, bila saya kata variable cost, it's uh, very directly with the law. Okay. Jadi maksudnya kalau awak nak hasilkan lebih banyak, lebih banyak produk, you have to you have to buy more material, raw material. Bila, when you buy more, you have to pay more. Packaging pun sama lah. If you want to, if you want to produce more, you have to pay more. Jadi total cost ialah the sum of fixed and variable cost. Kita campur jadi total cost. Itu adalah cara untuk kita kira, uh, untuk kita tahu cost kita berapa. Okay, so when it comes to cost at different level of production, uh, saya pernah bagi contoh ni dalam kelas, saya kata kalau awak duduk dalam satu rumah sewa, kalau awak duduk dalam satu rumah sewa, kalau dalam rumah sewa tu ada lima orang, awak kena bayar lima ratus, seorang kena bayar berapa? Ha, jawab. Lima orang, sewa lima ratus, Seorang kena bayar RM100,000. Tapi kalau dalam rumah sewa tu ada 10 orang, sewa masih sama RM500,000, seorang kena bayar berapa? Seorang kena bayar, ha, jawab, seorang kena bayar berapa? Okey, bila ada 10 orang, uh, seorang kena bayar RM50,000. Okey, so bermaksud semakin ramai orang dalam satu rumah sewa tu, semakin rendah awak kena bayar duit sewa. Macam tu jugalah untuk production. Um, when the production is higher ataupun semakin banyak awak produce semakin kuranglah kos yang awak kena bear uh, dengan menggunakan analogi yang sama 
Dalam satu rumah, kalau ada ramai orang, okay, untuk bayar RM500, awak cuma bayar seorang RM50 saja. 10 orang bayar RM50. Tapi kalau uh, dalam rumah tu ada 5 orang je, seorang kena bayar RM100. So, sama juga kalau awak produce banyak barang, semakin banyak barang yang awak produce tu, setiap satu produk tu dia akan tolong awak, okay, contohlah untuk hasilkan satu ni, lebih kurang daripada bila awak hasilkan sedikit. Okay, sebab itulah di China, they are asking for minimum quantity order from the customer because they want to produce as much as possible because when they produce as much as possible they are able to lower down the cost sebab makin banyak produk yang dihasilkan makin kurang cost yang dia perlu bear yang dia perlu tanggung tetapi dalam sampai satu tahap okay dia tak uh, akan sampai satu tahap atau satu level yang makin tinggi production tu akan makin uh, tak okey. Ha, bila awak tengok dekat sini eh, saya tak boleh tunjuk guna tangan. Ha, awak tengok sini lah. Okey, satu, okey awak nampak kan petang satu-satu ni bila satu maksudnya kuantiti seribu, kos ni tinggi, masih masih lagi tinggi. Kedua, okay, dia dah turun sikit dah. Okey, ketiga dia turun. Okey, ni yang paling uh, yang ni paling bagus eh. Empat ni paling bagus sebab RM3,000 awak punya cost per unit makin rendah. Ini yang the optimal level yang paling okey sekali. Tapi bila awak sampai RM4,000 dah tak boleh dah. Dia dah naik dah. Cost dia makin naik. See? Kenapa benda tu terjadi? Sebab bila awak produce terlampau banyak, uh, operation tak boleh nak cover lagi. Orang dah mula tak uh, tak boleh fokus. Okay, your employees. Okay, when we are talking about production, you are talking about employees who handle the production so employees cannot focus uh, and then uh, you have to increase more uh, employees to handle the production uh, lepas tu even the production itself pun dah tak boleh sebab so, machine tu bukan boleh kita nak kerjakan dia se sehandal mungkin okay? so dia ada certain uh, level yang dia boleh reach sampai tahap tu dia dah tak boleh nak work lagi dah okay so that's why you have to identify Uh, dia punya level yang mana paling sekali optimal boleh saya kata macam paling efektif dan efficient untuk awak produce and with with the result of producing uh, cost per unit yang paling rendah aduh ok so ni break even when I'm talking about break even as I told you earlier you have to cover your cost first ok awak nampak sini ya eh? fixed cost Total cost, fixed cost awak, atau awak ada variable cost yang dia akan berubah-ubah mengikut level of production. Makin banyak awak produce, makin banyaklah awak kena beli raw material, okay? So, dia akan berubah-ubah lah. Kalau 200, ini total cost ni sebab variable cost ni berubah kan? Okay? Kalau 400 macam ni, fixed cost masih sama. Setiap bulan awak bayar, awak bayar sewa sama, awak bayar gaji sama. Uh, I mean, akan ada perubahan pada gaji, okay? However, ini adalah something yang tidak tidak berubah dengan production. Ah itu saya nak bagi tahu awak tidak berubah dengan production itu fixed cost. So total cost, okey bila kita campur variable cost dekat sini, ada tak boleh tunjuk. Okey awak dapat sinilah. Imagine, okey. Variable cost total, uh, dengan fixed cost dapat total cost. In order for you to get your to get your apa? To get your profit here. Awak nampak ni awak kena tolak total revenue tolak dengan total cost. So you have to get 20 million You know, order for you to have the uh, target return of 2 million. Total cost awak 10 ribu. Eh, 10 ribu. 10 juta. Total cost. Okay. You have and you have to sell 2 million. You know, order for you to get. Eh. You have to sell 2 million. You know, order for you to get 2 million. Okay. Dekat break even ni bermaksud. Kalau awak boleh jual pada harga. Saya tak tahu 9 kot sini. Okay. 9. Itu bermaksud awak tak tak rugi, tak untung. Break even lah. Maksud awak kena lebih daripada itu lagi untuk awak dapatkan profit. So, you have to get more than 9,000 in order for you uh, to get uh, your profit. Okay? So, seterusnya kita ada competition-based pricing. As I told you earlier, is about uh, comparing your price with your competitors, strategies, cost, prices and market offering. Uh, Pepsi akan try to refer to Coke, uh, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola we try to refer to Pepsi when they want to decide on the price of the product. Okay, so because uh, 
Diet Coke ada. Uh, kalau Pepsi kita ada Diet Pepsi. Uh, kat Malaysia tak guna diet, kata diet kita guna light. Kat Malaysia memang memang uh, apa? Apa tu saya panggil? Anti sikit lah perkataan diet ni kan. So dia guna Coke, Coke light, Pepsi light. Eh Pepsi light ni tak tahulah saya tahu Coke light ni. Okay. So uh, so now we will go to uh, satu, dua, tiga. Tiga habis dah. Yang keempat, keempat kita ada Uh, price, major pricing strategy for new product ha, Beza Yang ini untuk produk keseluruhan Jadi maksudnya Company dia tadi Bila dia nak dia nak, nak set the price Bila dia beli barang Dia nak set price Dia boleh Based on cost Dia boleh based on uh, Customer Sebab customer ni Dia ada dia punya value Yang dia dah perceive sendiri Kalau dia kata dia nak murah Dia nak Dia, dia will get They will go for They will go for Everyday Low Pricing. Strategi punya. And di, kalau dia kata dia tak kisah harga mahal, dia boleh je nak go for ah, yang ni yang tadi saya bagi tahu dengan awak, this one. Ah, saya ni kejap ke belakang, kejap ke belakang, ah, sama je yang lebih kurang. Value added pricing. So in order for you to justify your higher price, we are telling them that we are giving you extra services. So that's why no problem lah. Jadi orang kalau dia kalau dia kata saya tak kisah janji saya dapat servis baik itu saya kata customer perception or customer value how the customer ni dia 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 dia, dia, dia okey je kalau harga tu sebab this is something that they can accept okey uh, apa apa aku keluar lah ni apa lah ha, sebab dia tak dah tak ada kena mengena lah dengan chapter ni sebenarnya saya pergi saya tutup lepas tu saya kata ada dua chapter so ada terlampau banyak saya kalau boleh nak habiskan dalam masa satu jam okey Okay So 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 there are two uh, Major pricing strategies For new product First is market scheming strategy Second is market penetration strategy So kalau kita guna market Pricing strategy Ni dia apa yang dia buat tau Uh, saya letak muka sikit bawah je eh. uh, Dia dah boleh nampak Market skimming pricing strategy Dia set harga yang mahal Pada permulaan Okay Bila dia nak introduce the new product Siapa yang selalu buat benda ni sebenarnya uh, Dia set high initial price To skim revenue layers from the market Orang yang selalu buat ini ialah Apple iPhone So that's why When you get, uh, when you want to get iPhone, harga dia RM3,000 lebih, RM4,000 lebih di Malaysia. Kalau dekat overseas, harga dia berbeza. Di US, harga dia berbeza because of the, because of the currency exchange, okay? So, apa, uh, so, Apple, uh, iPhone punya brand, what, what, uh, what they are doing, they are using market skimming pricing by set up higher price when they want to introduce the product to the market. Tetapi setelah 6 bulan setahun harga dia akan turun Itu adalah strategi yang digunakan oleh mereka So that's why uh, bila dia yang high price tu dia akan jual sebab dia dia memang harga uh, Okay to tell you that market skimming pricing strategi ni hanyalah berguna adalah uh, Kita nak panggil best fit, best used by those companies With uh, ah, Saya dapat pasal Okay, uh, market skimming pricing strategy is best used by the company yang ada uh, loyal customer. Uh, so when they when they have loyal customer, the customers the customer are not the customer are not uh, reluctant to buy even though it is high price. Okay, so bukan semua orang boleh guna market skimming pricing strategy ni. Kalau those company yang baru nak berjinak-jinak dengan business, yang baru nak mulakan business, market skimming pricing strategy is not suitable for them. Okay. Uh, Well-established companies are those uh, are those are suitable for this kind of uh, strategy. Okay. Awak nampak mana? Product quality and image must support the price. So that's why they can charge for higher price at the beginning. And buyer must want the product at the price. 
buyer mas one tu lawyer only the lawyer uh, customers would like to get the product with that kind of price higher price as compared to the others yang kedua kita ada tudung market penetration pricing ok so this one kalau tadi dia guna uh, higher price this one they offering lower price or low price for a new product in order to attract a large number of buyers and a large uh, market share and yang selalu gunakan alamat saya, saya tak nak ok yang selalu gunakan this kind of strategy ialah Samsung Samsung di India bila dia nak enter the market in India and Africa uh, what did they do they give a low price a product in order for them to enter the india uh, to india and uh, Afri africa market samsung buat benda ni okay so habis uh, itu yang satu dua tiga empat okay yang kelima and we also have the fifth main point which is mark asin nak cakap market je uh, pricing strategy to maximize profits and sales kita ni we have pricing strategy because we want to gain profit and sales dan kalau awak tengok balik dalam four piece ok uh, disebut sama-sama dengan saya dalam hati product place price promotion product place price promotion ok promo, uh, price dekat sini eh satu dua tiga ni mereka semua ni memerlukan duit tapi hanya price saja yang memberikan duit. So bila memberikan duit kita nak maximize the profit and sales from price, apa yang kita akan buat ialah saya teruskan ke okey this one. Product line pricing, optional product pricing, captive product pricing, by product pricing, product bundle pricing. Okey, saya tengok dekat sini. Ni chapter sebelum. Ini chapter. Okey. Sebab saya tak berapa nampak sikit Okay So uh, Untuk oh, For product line pricing um, Saya pernah bagi tahu sebelum ni kan What is the definition of product line Product line is the product That are grouped together Dia duduk bersama-sama Because they share similar Characteristic Price range uh, Target market Or any other any other things that make them similar to each other so kalau dekat Watson kita ada product line macam contoh uh, hair care ada war, uh, ada personal care so dalam personal care ada banyak produk dalam tu kalau hair care ada banyak produk dalam tu so bila saya kata hair care you uh, ada moisturizer ada shampoo ada serum it's all inside product line kan okay So, kalau kita nak buat product line pricing, apa yang company akan buat, mereka akan letakkan broad range of price for various product. Broad range of price means that uh, kita ada harga dari harga yang mungkin uh, harga yang murah, harga yang sederhana, harga yang tinggi. Because, sebab ini dia punya uh, purpose dia ialah untuk maximize profit and sale. Dengar tu. Maximize profit and sales. So, when you want to maximize profit and sales, you have, you can consider to have different range of price in the organization, in the market. Okay. So, bila awak buat range of product, harga murah, sederhana dan tinggi, orang yang tak mampu, dia boleh go for yang murah dan yang sederhana. Orang yang mampu boleh go for uh, high price. Tapi, kalau awak just letak high price, Orang yang tak mampu memang tak akan beli produk awak. Okay, so that's how you maximize the profit and sale by using product line pricing. Optional product pricing. Uh, optional product pricing bermaksud ialah uh, access, uh, bermaksud you sell, you sell bin product, okay, and you also have the accessory product with you. Okay, bila, kejap ada call. Okay, optional product pricing jadi uh, main product, okay sebagai contoh mungkin kereta, so you can also get the other um, accessories that you want to uh, sell with uh, together with the main product which is car. Sebab itulah kalau kita tengok uh, kalau contoh kereta Honda lah. Okay, sebab uh, I have experience with that. 
kalau awak nak beli kereta saja dia ada harga dia tapi aksesori kalau nak tambah you have to pay like 3000 dan dia katakan uh, the accessories that we provided is actually uh, quite um, cheap and as compared <laughs> as compared to the other as compared uh, as compared of you buying it alone okay so they are offering you with the accessory product together with the main product that they want to sell to you kereta ada accessory dia Uh, kalau untuk phone pun ada aksesori dia uh, Kalau untuk uh, produk elektrik pun ada aksesori dia So there are, many, there are many examples that you can use in order for you to to explain about optional product pricing Seterusnya kita ada uh, captive product pricing For captive product pricing is uh, something that must be used together with the main product Kalau tak ada, okay, awak nak jual Yang saya boleh guna ialah contoh printer eh kalau printer, kalau tak ada ink boleh tak awak nak guna? Tak boleh kan? Jadi apa dia akan buat, dia akan jual together. Uh, so that uh, you, uh, in order for you to buy printer, you have to buy the ink together. Uh, jadi jadi sekarang ni dia memang memang kena beli lah. Jadi awak boleh maximize the profit sebab kalau kalau nak jual hanya ink semata, probably mungkin you have to wait, okay? But if you want to sell it together, awak boleh sell it together. Okay, contoh, dalam Amazon ada satu buku atau e-book kita panggil. Jadi dalam e-book, uh, kalau awak nak baca e-book tu awak kena guna tablet dia. Jadi in order for you to buy the e-book, you have to buy together with the tab tablet yang awak ada. So you have to buy it together in order for you uh, to use e-book in Amazon. Jadi awak kena beli tablet, awak kena beli e-book sekali. Even kalau uh, awak pakai apa? Uh, even kalau awak pakai apa ni saya panggil uh, movie pun ataupun music pun, all can be played inside the tablet. Buy product pricing. Okay, buy product pricing ialah uh, the buy product that is produced from the main product. Okay, dalam bahasa Melayu ialah produk yang dihasilkan daripada produk utama. Sebagai contoh, kalau untuk uh, kita panggil apa nama tu? Uh, kelapa sawit ha, Nak sebut kelapa sawit susah So kelapa sawit uh, Dia punya apa uh, Kita panggil kelapa sawit tu eh. Bila kita dah, dah Dah gunalah kelapa sawit tu Kita dah buat satu produk Dia akan ada dia punya apa Sisa-sisa Sisa ke by product lah tu okay, Sisa bukan sisa okay, Lebihan daripada uh, kelapa sawit yang digunakan Jadi that by product of kelapa sawit Boleh digunakan untuk menghasilkan sesuatu yang lain Okey, tapi yang paling dekat dengan hati saya ialah saya pernah uh, ada satu research ni dia buat untuk uh, uh, apa uh, apa yang dia buat ialah semua by product daripada daripada uh, tumbuh-tumbuhan lah apa buah-buahan okey kan yang dah tak guna ke apa dia boleh hasilkan sesuatu yang lain which is that will give profit to the company so instead of just focusing on kelapa sawit tu sendiri untuk menghasilkan sesuatu Lebihan daripada kelapa sawit tadi tu sendiri, kita boleh menghasilkan sesuatu yang lain juga. Okay? Sepatutnya awak nak hasilkan uh, something, you can also uh, you can also produce something else in order for you to uh, maximize your profit. Saya tak bagi contoh yang dalam sebab saya nak awak buat dalam awak punya tutorial juga. Okay? Product bundle pricing. Okay, this one saya dah banyak kali dah cakap dalam kelas. Saya geram sangat. Student selalu cakap bundle ni ialah dibeli barang dekat bundle tu. Saya dah ulang berkali-kali dan saya tak tak hairan lah kalau dalam exam ke dia akan melakukan benda yang sama. Kalau masuk exam. Okay. Uh, nak bagi tahu dengan awak ialah bundle ni ialah when you combine several products uh, together with a lower price. Okay. Contoh ialah uh, ni. Kebetulan. Oh jatuh kau. Eh this one. MACD. Kalau anak saya dia nak beli uh, bubur saja, harga dia mahal. Tapi disebabkan dia teringin juga nak mainan, dalam Happy Meal tu ada mainan, ada bubur, ada air, ada fries, dia dapat harga yang lebih murah. That is combining several products at a reduced price. Um, ada juga kita panggil multiple unit pricing. This one, kalau kita cakap pasal multiple unit pricing, dia ni kena same product eh. Produk yang sama kita combine dan kita jual pada harga yang murah. That is multiple unit pricing. Tak ada dalam ni pun. Ha, tak ada. 
dia masih lagi menggunakan konsep kita combine several product tapi kalau multiple unit pricing is about same product you combine together and you offer at lower price tapi kalau product bundle pricing combine several different product together at lower price kalau saya kata kalau untuk multiple unit pricing tadi contoh dia ialah uh, contoh dia ialah ni uh, item Item kalau awak beli satu, harga dia sering lebih. Tapi kalau awak beli item tu dalam 12, awak boleh dapat dalam harga uh, 10 ringgit. Eh, dia, dia jual 12 kan, dia, awak akan dapat lebih murah. Bawah lagi daripada RM1 lebih untuk satu tin. Ha, jadi, produk yang sama, tin-tin ayam tin -tin dah sama. Okay, you combine together, then you call it multiple unit pricing. By product pricing tadi, jangan lupa eh, you have to find... Uh, Apakah produk lain yang kita boleh hasilkan uh, Bila kita dah hasilkan satu main produk Sebab yang ni saya cuma bagi contoh Kelapa sawit Because if you are able to be creative This is where you can generate income Ini akan jadi salah satu soalan kepada tutorial I think uh, this is the last one Yang ada I would like to look into Price adjustment strategies Just to tell you that We have different type of customer. We have different type of situation. So the price also can be according to different type of customer and different type of situation. So ini adalah strategies yang ada di dalam price adjustment strategies. Uh, discount and allowance tu normal lah eh. Okay. Uh, kalau uh, customer tu boleh uh, beli dalam jumlah yang banyak. Well, uh, they are able to pay early and they promote the product for example, they promote it in their Instagram, they promote it in their Facebook or Twitter, okay, they will get, they will get discount and allowance, itu kita panggil discount and allowance pricing strategy dan uh, seterusnya kita ada ialah different situation lah kan okay, kalau, kalau situasi ni kalau awak ni adalah Uh, customer yang biasa-biasa Biasa-biasa lah macam uh, Awak tak bagi benefit apa-apa pun Harga macam biasa lah Tapi kalau If you are able uh, To buy uh, At high volume uh, you If you are able to pay early Or you want to promote the product They will give you special price uh, Itu berbeza Kan saya kata Keadaan yang berbeza Customer yang berbeza Situasi yang berbeza Kedua Segmented pricing So, involve selling product or services at two or more prices where the difference in price is not based on different cost. Um, awak jual produk tu dan ianya berbeza tapi bukan sebab cost dia berbeza. Maksudnya bukanlah disebabkan cost dia tinggi that's why lah harga dia lain. Bukan, it's not about cost. Tapi ianya adalah disebabkan beberapa faktor. Jadi faktor itu tadi telah terbahagi kepada 1, 2, 3, 4 Customer segment pricing Product form pricing Location based pricing Time based pricing So maksudnya ialah There are differences in prices Not because of the cost But because of the customer Because of the product Because of the location And because of the time ha, Jadi awak kalau tak tak ingat apa saya cakap ni Awak remind eh remind Rewind balik Apa yang saya cakap tadi Okay for uh, This one Yelah untuk be effective Must be submentable uh, Ada nampaklah perbezaan antara satu sama lain Okay Dan kalau boleh jangan lebih daripada Jangan lebih daripada extra revenue It must be legal Okay um, Saya rasa kat sini Okay Yang ni this one saya kena terangkan Okay contoh customer untuk customer, there are different prices for adult and kids. There are different prices for senior citizen. There are different prices for student. Uh, student dah sebut tadi lah. There are different prices for different types of customer age. Okay. Kalau untuk produk, saya cari kat sini ya. Different produk and Different product have different prices Bukan sebab cost Tapi sebab dia memang nak buat different price tu uh, Kalau untuk location based pricing Okay uh, Kalau awak tengok dalam theater Siapa yang duduk dekat theater kau uh, 
uh, concert lah uh, Concert ke theater sama je uh, nak, nak tengok concert Siapa duduk dekat depan harga lain Duduk dekat atas harga lain Duduk kat tepi harga lain Okay Uh, kalau kita balik Kalau kita kan ada duduk kat atas tu harga lain Yang duduk depan harga lain Duduk tepi harga lain So different location will have different price Selain daripada itu Those student, foreigner uh, Okay I mean uh, foreign students They have to pay higher price Or higher tuition fees As compared to local students So that's why uh, The universities are encouraging uh, Uh, foreign students to come to their university because they will get higher tuition fees from international students. Location. Awak ni berada di mana? Kalau awak daripada foreign countries, if you come to study in Malaysia, you have to pay higher prices. That is location. Time-based pricing. So, kalau dalam time-based pricing, uh, season berbeza, weekend mungkin berbeza. Contoh, kalau waktu weekend, awak buat harga dia berbeza. Uh, because you want to create excitement. Because, ini bukan sebab cost. Saya dah beritahu tadi, ni produk tadi tu. Different produk have different price, not because of cost, because they want, they, they, there are certain reason of why the company are doing that. We can, uh, kita pergi balik pada time based pricing, we can berbeza, month berbeza, season berbeza, hari raya, harga lebih murah. So, that are the things that they try to implement in the organization. Psychological pricing. Okay. Uh, psychological pricing is actually the price that is uh, determined by the customer. Saya rasa saya dah guna dah tadi roti tadi kan Awak cuba fikir balik lah roti Awak rasa ada tak? Logik tak roti RM50 tak tak logik So they will never put the roti price The price of the roti uh, is RM50 Roti, saya bukan cakap roti yang hebat-hebat tu Yang ada coklat dengan apa dalam tu Saya kata roti yang macam gan, Roti coklat yang, yang, ni, yang ni ada coklat ada dalam tu Ada coklat dalam tu Cakap buka balik lah Okay Okay uh, So, it's all based on the psychology of the prices itself. Uh, how much is the customer uh, perceive the price of the product? Okay. Uh, reference price. Okay. Reference price, apa yang uh, apa yang company akan buat ialah retailer, saya pernah bagi tahu sebelum ni, retailer, dia akan buat, dia akan letak tiga barang, tak kisahlah berapa barang sekalipun, dia akan letak sebelah, sebelah menjebelah. Kalau ni dia lemang kan, dia letak lemang tu sebelah menjebelah tau. Satu lemang daripada dia, satu lemang daripada company lain, satu lemang daripada uh, competitor, dia letak. Okay, so dia akan saja letak harga yang tinggi tu dekat sebelah. Dia akan letak produk yang dia nak jual tu kat tengah. Dia akan letak satu lagi produk yang mungkin low quality. So, bila bila customer dia dah ada dia ada reference price dalam otak dia tau. Dia akan fikir, eh, mahal ni ha. Sampai RM20. Baik aku beli yang ni lah. Quality nampak macam okay. Harga pun boleh tahan. Oh, okay. So, you will go... So, the customer, they will have, they will carry uh, certain price in their mind. Sebab dia dah ternampak benda tu, dia akan datang. Okay, jadi dia akan buat comparison. So, you have to do this in order for you to make sure that the customer will buy your product yang awak nak dia beli. Okay? Uh, so, that dia akan not current price tu berapa. Dia akan remember past, past price tu berapa. Okay, kalau dulu, eh. Sekejap, dulu kan harga dia ni. Eh, tapi sekarang harga dia macam ni. Eh, ni lagi murah ni. Eh, aku kena beli ni. Okay. So, they actually denote the current price berapa. Ini ini situasi kedua juga dia boleh buat. Okay. Dia note current price berapa. Dia note juga past price berapa. Okay. Um, note, 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 note. And then, and then, what the customer will do, they will assess it. Dia akan, dia akan assess the situation. Dulu harga macam ni, sekarang harga macam ni. Ah, belilah. Ha, see, reference prices. You put the reference price there so that they can assess the situation. Nak beli ke tidak, nak beli ke tidak, berbaloi ke tidak. 
sesuai ke tidak, memberi manfaat ke tidak, okay? Uh, promotional price, see, you temporarily price the product below the list price and sometimes below the cost sebab awak nak increase short run sales. Itu yang kita buat macam uh, 90%, jadi cost tu tak cover. Tapi awak buat sekejap je because you want to increase short run sales. Okay. Seterusnya, geographical pricing. Okay, geographical pricing is actually because of the different places that the customer is located or the customers are located. So, when it comes to customer are located, okay, uh, you can use FOB. FOB origin pricing, uniform delivered pricing, Zone pricing, basic point pricing, quick absorption pricing. Untuk FOB pricing, alamak, saya kena gerakkan buka saya ni. Okay. Free on board pricing. Di mana, okay, customer cuma perlu bayar uh, dari, uh, uh, apa, customer perlu bayar daripada factory to destination. Jadi, the cost that they need to bear is actually from Dekat mana dia diletakkan dan dari factory tu sampai lah destination tu dia kena bayar semua. Uniform delivered pricing. Okay, ini tak kisahlah awak duduk mana, awak duduk Antartika ke, awak duduk Melaka ke, awak duduk Kelantan ke, awak duduk mana-mana je lah. Okay. Uh, the price that you have to pay is the same. Uh, tapi kalau dekat Malaysia ni, dia berbeza. Okay, uh, untuk semenanjung, Harga berbeza dengan harga di uh, Sabah Sarawak because uh, we have to bear the uh, apa postage. Okay, so itu bukan uniform delivered pricing lah sebab kalau uniform delivered pricing awak duduk mana sekalipun harganya tetap sama. Tak ada perbezaan. Okay, seterusnya kita ada zone pricing. So, kalau zone pricing ni uh, dia kita akan buat zone. Maksudnya kalau orang zon ni harga ni macam ni, orang zon ni harga macam ni. Tadi saya dah bagi tahu kalau semenanjung harga macam ni, Sabah Sarawak harga macam ni. So dia yang set up zon tu. Siapa yang set up? The seller who set up the zone or, or the geographic location of the customers. Basic point pricing. Okay. Uh, basic point pricing uh, decided by the seller. Dia akan decide, okay contoh, Uh, the customer need to pay daripada pelabuhan kelang ke rumah mereka. Itu basic point. Dia kata kalau daripada basic point ni adalah daripada pelabuhan kelang. Ataupun bukan daripada pelabuhan kelang, daripada port dekat China tu lagi dia kena bayar. Okay. So, basic point yang diletakkan oleh uh, seller untuk uh, dibayar oleh seller. Eh sorry, untuk customer. Bayar oleh customer. Free absorption pricing is actually customer do not have to pay anything and the seller will absorb all the costs. Um, why? Uh, ini adalah salah satu strategy. Especially when you are dealing with the big companies that want to buy your product. When you are dealing with the, uh, when you are dealing with the uh, customer who normally buy a large volume of products. So that's why you told them, you tell them that don't worry, I will absorb all the costs, you, you just have to pay this amount. Okay, that is paid absorption pricing. Ooh, dynamic pricing is actually kita adjust lah, mana yang terbaik. And you can also use the software in order for you to do that because you want to have the dynamic pricing that meet the characteristic and needs of individual customer and situation. Okay? International pricing Uh, kalau international pricing as you have to understand that uh, you can try to set the price based on condition of the economic competitive situation, laws and regulation wholesale and retail system so these are the these are the consideration that you can consider when you want to set your product that you want to set in the international market sebab kalau economic tidak berapa baik you try to set it lower price because you know that the, uh, because you you know your target market will not be able to buy your product if you set it higher 
uh, and you can also try to look into uh, uh, laws and regulations sebab berapa ceiling price dia punya apa floor floor price ah, sorry okay so uh, yang tadi saya bagi tahu dengan awak yang nombor 7 dengan nombor 8 tu tadi eh these are issues associated with pricing so when you want to cut the price it can be because of there are a large amount of product in your company yang perlu dijual kalau tak jual akan ada masalah so you cut the price so that you can generate volume of sales or if you decide to increase the market share you can also cut the price so these are two things that you can uh, I mean uh, if you think that you would like to increase your market share or you want to decrease the amount of stock that you have you can cut your price but if you want to increase the price uh, to normal lah ramai orang buat sebenarnya when, when, there, when there is increase of demand you increase the price it's not really good but this is how the company try to get money okay when they get more demand from the public they will increase the price and one of the thing yang berlaku juga sebab ialah if when you have more demand means that you have to you have to produce more so maybe there's more more cost that you have to bear okay so lack of supply also you can also increase the price because it shows that there's shortage of supply so shortage of supply yang akan berlaku selalunya pada waktu-waktu musim perayaan ayam kurang jadi harga ayam naik even hari tu pun masa mula-mula berlaku je covid-19 harga emas sangat tinggi kerana ada shortage of supply sebab China tak boleh nak export juga ke Malaysia pada waktu tu dan uh, uh, yelah uh, production tak boleh nak berjalan because of the MCO and everything okay so that's why when there's lack of shortage uh, sorry that there's a lack of supply uh, the the seller also will try to increase their price uh, saya kata tadi tak nak tak nak tengok banyak eh tapi these are the things that you can understand by uh, reading uh, the news by reading the articles in the internet uh, so they are talking about why the issues relating to price happen is because of the market it's because of the supply it's because of the condition it's because of the uh, crisis which is happening okay um, see the same thing your model will be available okay in fact sebab bila kita nak reduce cash stock Okay, so kita nak keluarkan produk baru, kita kita cut lah price tu. Model are not selling well, terlalu banyak, quality issues, awak cut price juga. So, because you you do not want to, you do not want to keep your stock. When you keep your stock, it means that you have to maintain the product. And when you have to maintain the product, it means that you have to invest on maintenance, storage, uh, personnel. So all this will increase the cost of the organization. Price fixing. Uh, this one, uh, sebab saya kata, bukan tak penting. However, this all will be put inside the tutorial. Okay? Uh, tapi saya letak ambil sikit lah yang last ni kot. Okay, this one. Uh, deceptive pricing. Uh, ada banyak lah. Selalunya. Okay. Jadi, hari ni nak terang juga walaupun walaupun saya letak tutorial. Jadi, okay lah. Ini boleh lah saya letak dalam tutorial. Okay. Tapi this one, this one deceptive ni sebab this is the thing that is happening in the market. Jadi, maybe it's it's quite uh, pressing for me to uh, explain this why because you have to, to to realize that there are certain companies who provide a deceptive price or something which is uh, a mislead to the customer. Bila saya kata mislead, it provide misleading information which is not true. Uh, the customers see that the customers see the advertisement 
and they, they, they can and they can see that certain price is being advertised. But when they come to the store, the price is totally different. Or there's no promotion. Uh, and the product is, does not match the price. So these are the things which is not good, uh, which is uh, unethical for the company to do. Okay? So they create some sort like confusion to the customer relating to price. Uh, they advertise that there is 70% of sales promotion. So when the customer go to the store, there's no such thing. So inilah benda yang saya nak bagi tahu yang tidak uh, patut dilakukan oleh uh, oleh uh, company. Okay? So, uh, habis. Alam masa, satu jam sepuluh minit. So, class, <coughs> I hope that you learn something from me. I hope that it helps you uh, to understand about price. Just to tell you that I will ingat sahaja the important or the main points for each chapter. And for this chapter also, the same thing, there are several main points that you have to understand. And uh, as I told you earlier, okay, price is one of, is, uh, one of the four P's which gives money to the company. So it's very important for you to really look into the pricing strategy in order for you to get uh, the profit and sales. Uh, so, uh, di kesempatan ini, saya nak mengucapkan selamat hari raya. Maaf Zahir dan Matin. Um, I hope that this lemah, okay, you can enjoy it with your family. Uh, and for those who are unable to go back to their hometown, um, stay safe. And I wish you nothing but the best. And inshallah, uh, we will meet again in the future. Bye-bye.